yeah. Intro yo. This is the Leo Perez Show. I am your guest host, Amilcar Ortega. We are here today with a very special guest. He's the Moscow, he works at the Moscow Music School and plays in four bands, Poveda, Laps Around the Sun, My Holiday, and Third Room. He's the co-founder and co-owner of DTH Studios, recording mixing engineer and music producer extraordinaire leonardo perez a round of applause yeah let's do this man let's do this i'm so happy to be in your show man i'm so happy to be in your show yeah it's not my show i'm the guest host but i'm going to to hold it down for for today uh leo the the usual host is is busy being uh in another show you know he's he's a guest in another show so we are like in this multiverse kind of thing that is now all the rage so we had to do it also you know we we, we are like that we we are jumping on trends <laughs> yeah to try to get uh, traction here in youtube uh, check out the old episodes of the leo first show There are great guests there uh, and a lot of interesting conversations about a wide var variety of topics. And uh, let's get into it. We have a great one today. Yeah. Let's do this. Leo, let's do this. Uh, my first question, I don't know. Like, we were talking uh, behind the scenes and I think that the most important topic today is everything you're doing with uh, free uh, and open so source software and why are you doing this but of course we can't skip the intro like uh, this is all in the context of the of the war and what's happening uh, with uh, I, I, I can't even uh, Say it. You better say it. Uh, <laughs> please intro this, you, because I don't want Absolutely. to... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I have a great idea on how to enter to this. In the year... Thank you, In the year kind of... Uh, in the year what it was, like 2012, I remember. I just moved to Budapest from London. And uh, and I had a I had an iPhone uh, one you know I remember I actually had an iPhone one I had an iPod I had an iPhone one and uh, in a point I was like using my iPhone and I was like wait where's the file like where's the file finder here like where can I see my folders <laughs> and I was like oh no you can't and I was like what <laughs> wait 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 so you were telling me that I cannot see where my folders are in my own phone are you crazy so. I started this sort of like like journey into jailbreaking my iPhone, and so I jailbroke my iPhone. This was like 2012, something like that, and uh, I I managed to do it. And so then I realized that I was like, wait a minute, like there is an app store that is governing a lot of things in my life. So I mean, I cannot install apps in my phone that I bought with my money <laughs> outside of the app app store that you're giving me as a stock. What is that? So that made me move immediately to Android. I was like, okay, look, that's it. Like, fuck this. I'm gonna go to Android. And Google back then had this uh, motto, which was, "Don't be evil." And so <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> precious. Yeah, yeah. Those guys. And so those guys are really good comedians, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah. And so, and so back then, by the way, I I was just landing into Bitcoin. Boom, which takes us to Bitcoin, like like into the idea of Bitcoin. Like I was once in a party in London, and <laughs> some we were talking about something about how to how to um, 
how to to use the internet more profoundly to put it more 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 as soft as I can. <laughs> and so that person told me blah 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 Bitcoin. I was like, well, you know, when you hear something and it just like strokes you in the soul, and you know that this is gonna this is something in important word, you know. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. I went into it right away. I was like, oh my god, what this Bitcoin thing. I, I, again, I pull off. I have told this story in podcasts together and things like that. I pull off early, etc. We will come back to that later. But it's part of the story because thanks to Bitcoin, I understood Reddit. Uh, and then I was like obtaining information from Reddit. And then I realized that the, the, the iPhone forums were on Reddit and like about how to jailbreak your phone. And then the same with Android. And so I moved to Android and following this motto of Google thinking, ah, Google is not evil. Ha 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 again, like the most loud ha ha ha. Um and so and so I started using Android to later realize that it had the same problem. I mean I was like, wait a minute, like okay, it's a bit more flexible, but I still I still don't have the power over my phone that I should have, you know. So okay. Uh, after that, uh, a decade passed, literally, a full on decade. And uh, and I was just like too busy and too tired to pay attention to to how to jailbreak a phone, how to like install these apps and stuff. And I went over with the mainstream flow, you know, and and of and the yeah. custom and the habit of okay, well, what are these companies that are there? Wow, look at this free service! Oh my god! Oh, now I can pay a bit for it. It's like six hundred <laughs> rubles. It's kind of like eight, five dollars, six dollars a month. Wow, that's great for all of this. Wow. And uh, and so and so yeah, I lived my ten years, my previous ten years, uh, with a Google Drive account, super uh, active, you know, with a Google Photos account, taking all the photos of my phone. Uh, with I have always been privacy oriented, but but I was sort of like be super hypocritical in my own world about this, because because whatever, it's just comfortable. And uh, and so yeah, I I have two point five terabytes of data on the cloud of, of Google at this point. And uh, and so adding, adding some stuff together, I was always had internally this itchiness of trying to move out of there, but never had the necessity. And then some dot together, some of sort of like two months ago before the conflict, the current conflict in, in, uh, in the region that started, um, I, I realized one day that I got an email from Google telling me something like, Hey, uh, there is a file in your Google Drive folder that is a recording of a guitar, and the file it's violating copyright laws. And I was like, "What? Like this is a, this is a recording I made with some band in the studio? So, what are you telling me that this thing is like some original song?" And I tweeted it, angry, like just saying, "Like, wow, man, like." This is the future. This is what's coming. You know, like look at yeah, this. Yeah, like, yeah. I told me on my file, it can be used. And something really funny happened there. Google answered me to that tweet, saying something like, "Oh, thanks for reaching out." And I was like, "Man, I didn't reach out to you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I fucking reach out to you. Like I just said that this, and so Google was like, "Thanks for reaching out." Oh, no worries. There is a little form that you can fill up. You know, and you can free that file in a couple of days. We're here to help. Thank you. Bye. And I was like, ah, okay. So of course, I mean, the files of my Google Drive are not mine, really. Like as long as, long as I don't have them, not your keys, not your coins, not your bits, yeah. not your files. You know, hmm. totally. Yeah, uh, it happens to the best of us, man. <laughs> that uh, Feel more calm you about. know, you go with the flow. You start using the the phone more and more, and. Yeah. Yeah, one day you see yourself and you're like uh, a model citizen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Continue. it became it became apparent to me in the last uh, again, you see I started my Android relationship trying to break that free then I com conformed, you know, and this is going to take us obviously to the topic a very famous topic between us which is the f the f uh, freaking Matrix movie. Uh, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get into it. So, so because because you see, you see what happens in it, it isn't exactly the plot of the movie and uh, of Matrix Four. And, and I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna go there. But it's an important metaphor. It's the best thing to explain it. Like in the in the first three movies that happened, there was a version of the Matrix, and in the Matrix Four, there is a new version of the Matrix. Like the Matrix was updated to a new software, and so okay. in, in the previous version of the Matrix, 
everything was authoritarian and forced on the people that were on that matrix. In the new version, yeah. they're kind of like not policing who wants to come out, but they're making the, the, the matrix so psychologically appealing through social media <laughs> that the people don't yeah. want to leave. They don't want to leave that okay. matrix. And so people who I were red peeling themselves, they kind of like, ah, whatever. Like, I don't want to red peel myself anymore because like, I'm in the matrix, you know, it's kind of nice. And yeah, I love that metaphor. Yeah, Continue. and that's, that's, that's the point of the movie, actually. That's the point of, of, of the new movie. It's, 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 it's a critic on, on the current status quo and, and, uh, and, and, and I mean, the, the relationship that we have with social media and this, this fake idolistic culture of fake idols and things. I mean, in the movie, Thomas Anderson is playing the creator of a video game called The Matrix Inside The Matrix Universe. So they even put it in your face. <laughs> They're taking a laugh at the people. They, they, they have Thomas Anderson running a video game who is about The Matrix inside The Matrix and the people who are in The Matrix are playing this video game like Matt and just loving it, you know. And then the movie, the video is about all the events of the previous three movies. So they show you in the video game like Trinity and Morpheus and everybody has these idols but they don't know really what they mean and they don't want to per, per push any further. You know, looks so exactly like the <laughs> world that we have right now. Uh, which is absolutely... Um, I don't know, man. Like, it's hard for me to describe it. It's full of joy and wonder and beauty. Of course. But I remember when... Sorry, go ahead. If you want to no, say it's something. A, it's a jail. <laughs> it's a jail. I remember no, no. when I was... Going, of course, it's ahead. full of beauty and all that. But we always <laughs> had that. The new thing, it's jail. We are in jail. I'm sorry to break it to you, but we are. Continue. <laughs> and, and you know, and you know, it. We're sort of in two layers of jail. You know, uh, one layer of jail is this voluntary technological uploading of our brains as a gift to to a company to scan it from A to Z. It's exactly what we're yep. doing with our cloud storage. It's insane. It's like, what if I just connect my brain and give you all my thoughts? That's exactly what we're doing. It's, and and also not only not only all my thoughts, but everything I watch, where I am, the photos I have. This is if you Dostoevsky would have wrote a novel about this a hundred years ago, we would be like, ah, that is such a dystopian society. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, totally. And it's our it's society. Unbelievable! It's unbelievable. And how, we all. How did we get here? And we all walked <laughs> into it like like woo yeah 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 totally i don't yeah. think that humanity really thought this through so well and then it was like boom okay <laughs> we're on in of course we didn't we fell into the trap hey here we are how can we get out of there here no but hey let's let's intro this with like uh the canceling of Russia and what does it do to a person that has been using all these yes. services? Yeah. So that has been a, a remarkable story. Like, um, and it has many layers in my life right now. I mean, the effects in my life are absolute. I mean, total on every level of my life. It is important to send this message out to the world. Like people think that these sanctions are just making everybody here so like hating the situation and wanting to destroy everything. And Russians are just not like that. It's like ah, no Google Drive. Okay, whatever. There is Yandex, and that's it. <laughs> He's like, okay, let's just move yeah. to Yandex, and, and that's the end of the conversation. There is not like oh my god. There is a lot of people who would really are upset of all that happening. Of course, there are like a lot. It's like 30% of the population or something are just really emotionally upset that there is this breakup with the West. Um, yeah, yeah, but the thing is not that it ha happened. The thing is that it can happen. Like only the going. possibility that they can just press a button and you're completely out of this part of the internet that's sick yeah that's that 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 shouldn't happen and that's where we are absolutely everyone and it's not only russians but everyone is there the, the, the thing, thing is that the click has not pressed been... the button exactly for you mm -hmm. but 
they can press a button for everyone else and this is the the proof this is proof of that yeah and look the good news for us that we are bitcoin enthusiasts and maximalists like in some point of this what is interesting to say is that at the core of that lies the payment network because what has happened exactly here it's not like google said and like hey guys listen we're not going to provide service to you no so let's recap a second i have two terabytes on google uh, drive the school that I operate has licenses in avid.com, Universal Audio, uh, um, and also Google accounts and all of that. So I run co a bachelor's in a university, uh, and and then I have my life as a producer. And these two things are together, and they are all in Google, all of them, calendar, everything. And so uh, the conflict in Ukraine starts, and then very early in the conflict in Ukraine, we get a set of sanctions imposed and this one of those sanctions was visa and mastercard will not be operating payments outside russia and so that that propelled google to and a lot of international companies to say like fuck it's really hard for us to operate now because also the swift was uh, russia was removed from the swift protocol most of banks of russia were removed from the swiss protocol swift protocol so wow what an open and happy network for everybody yeah let's love the world and give a lot of like a tolerance to everybody and let's just cut the, the payments to 150 million people because their government is doing something <laughs> it's like thank yeah. you world that, saving i don't it. know man i think you're being too kind to google and to avid and to hmm. all of those we will get there man i have a lot of anger to share with people. you no no we will get yeah there. but here it is. Like, they did this on purpose. Okay, they can't uh, charge you, and there's, like, a, a, a conflict with, exactly. the, with the payment rails, but they pushed the the cloud uh, service sure. model on you because before you could just buy their software and you had the, the software in your computer. Exactly. And what exactly. could they do? They exactly. could do... They couldn't do anything because you had the software in your computer like it's supposed to do. But they push this cloud world that doesn't exist because the cloud doesn't exist because it's just uh, another person's computer. You're exactly. just using another person's computer uh, and there's no cloud, you know. Your files are just in another person's computer yeah. instead of, of your computer. And they push this... Uh, heavily, heavily, like they change their whole business model for this to happen, and I don't think that it's just for the money. I, agree with I you. think they wanted the yeah. button, of course, to cancel people. Continue. Of course. Sorry, and no, no, and I, mean, I, 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 I agree with but, you. I mean, it's I, just like there is a yeah. there is a collusion there. And, and it's absolutely not to be conspiratorial. Maybe not just this collusion. I see it more like, look, the whole thing is, is, is sort of designed to... I want to I wanna be careful with the words I'm using there. There is a relationship between the law and the companies. And in that relationship, yeah. there is a lot of, of chess being played. And, and that's the best non-conspiratorial preamble I can sell, say to the idea that I understand that what happens is that Google creates that thing that they want to have that button and be able to have that power over somebody's life because what they are really doing is creating artificial intelligence and that's what the, is the real plan of Google to scan all of this because what I learned at this point is that Google reads intensely all your documents of Google Drive. Everything you upload to Google Drive is analyzed and scrutinized to the last photo. Um, and and all of that information is because Google is really interested in building on artificial intelligence systems. And so how do you build artificial intelligence systems? Hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if we have like a hard drive with the contents of the thoughts of billions of people? <laughs> like, wouldn't it be cool? That nah, sounds impossible. Oh, no, it's not possible to do. Boom. There you go. The world that we live in now. It's exactly what we're doing. So, so. I, I I still I still you know I'm not conspiratorial and I don't like to think conspiratorially. I understand that these people are pushing for those things, but I think they happen mostly because there are two poles of interest that have similar interests and they intertwine 
with each other, but I don't think there is a single core vector of of coordination for all of this. Like, whoa, ha, ha, let's just make this. Uh huh. Uh, just to make it clear, I think there's a, there's a single point of coordination. Yeah, and we disagree. We disagree on that one, yeah. but hey, yeah. I, I don't know, and you don't know. Exactly. We are just. Uh, trying to interpret the situation because because the way i see it is a bit like like you know there are these attractors in the in the in the sphere of human interaction you know and then there are attractors that see vectors there like like black rock for example like i mean they move trillions of dollars and of course their pool in this whole set of attractors is way deeper than the pool that i have or <laughs> even a person like joe rogan will have or something like that because black rock trillions of dollars so they participate in the co-construction of something that they're interested in yes and and they also push the political spheres uh, and and the diplomatical spheres in those directions um but i see it more like everybody's kind of hunting for those opportunities and grabbing them uh, so whatever the point yeah um, but i don't know man because it was a coordinated effort man i don't i don't see, i don't think that every company is going to push the cloud just because they think sure. it's better. like like if if every company is pushing the cloud and you are like a middle sized company, why won't you go against the grain? Sure. Uh, because that that gives you an edge. That gives you you're different. You're doing something different. You're but no one goes against the grain. Like it's 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 uh, th there's there was like. Uh, a mandate <laughs> everybody started pushing the cloud in the world like that's too much in that for me in I, that can't, sense, I can't if I were to be inclined to to think about a central axis of, of coordination for these things I would imagine it like this the American military is the biggest military in the world and and there are think tanks and people who are inside the whole American military institution you know and universities and great minds and and they are thinking about the future and thinking, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we have the minds of all our enemies in our database? <laughs> and so maybe they push through through their uh, their incentive programs, credits from the government, you know, to to uh, to to move the thing towards a certain direction. I would imagine, as far as that, you know, and then the big corporations make use of that and understand and they collude and they connect you know and they organize things but anyways going back to the yeah yeah going back to you the know thing. i'm cons i'm, I'm cons conspiratorial you're not mm -hmm. we have these two opinions the pu the public can uh, make their own mind yeah and tell us let's, in the comments what do you think actually yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly think? exactly so but let's push it forward to, to exactly to the yeah, to where yeah. we are now oh. to where we are now yeah. and so and so from my perspective as a, as a user who lives in Moscow, who uh, has his life in this cloud uh, world, um, the first thing I heard was like, oh, Google, uh, sorry, MasterCard and Visa are going to stop processing payments. And and so uh, that was uh, due to had start like on March, it was like April 6th or something, or early March, uh, or mi uh, middle March. And my partner wrote me like man we have a lot of important things because we have the studio the recording studio we pay for a, a google business account for extra features that we use a lot to run the company and and he was like man we need to pay for this for six months right now before the mastercard thing ends and we did it and i <laughs> i was just like participating in that process but i never thought about paying for my own google drive because I thought like, man, of course that, come on, like Google is not going to just like pull the plug on 150 million people. Like we use this thing so much, like it's not going to happen that they're going to receive payments in rubles. Uh, and so the thing, the MasterCard thing ended, we cannot pay for anything outside of Russia. The Russian government, because I mean, they understand the geopolitics of the whole thing. Something like say five years ago, they went to Visa and MasterCard and they told him, hey guys, you want to operate in Russia? Okay, this is the only way you can do this. We will rent you the network. And if you don't do that, we simply will not let you operate in Russia, period. And so the Russian government did that. They set up all the network for Visa and MasterCard. And then they run it because they knew this was going to happen one day. So when the, when the Visa and MasterCard ban came, the Visa and MasterCard ban, game, the, uh, ban didn't apply inside Russia. I can still pay with my Visa and MasterCard inside Russia everywhere I want because... 
the Russian government is operating that network. Or I don't know exactly who the Ministry of Finance are, but I don't know how it is. But outside of Russia, I cannot pay with anything in MasterCard. I thought that Google, because it's operated inside Russia and I pay them in rubles, they were going to just like continue setting up a payment for us so we can still have our files and do everything we need to do. And so I just thought, okay, let's do it for the studio, but not for my personal one. But okay, and, and, so, and so on, slowly but surely, my Google world started collapsing and falling apart. And to, to make the story a bit faster, so how it looks like when, you, when your country get cancelled. Um, the first thing that happened is that, well, let's focus still on the Google part for it. Later we'll go to other parts of what it means that your country gets cancelled. But on the Google part, it looks like this. Oh, I cannot pay for my Google uh, Drive storage. So, okay, I cannot send emails. Because when your Google uh, uh, Drive storage is blocked, you cannot send emails. And so, mm, damn it. Okay, let me try to pay. So I found... I found a card, a way to pay in th through something on Telegram. That I mean, it works. You can pay Spotify with this, etc. And it was like, ah, no, sorry, Google App Store canceled your payment. So I was like, whoa, okay. So then it means that I cannot edit any of my presentations that I have as a teacher. I made them all in Google Drive, thinking that I was going to use it forever, you know. Uh, I cannot uh, upload anything, edit any document. All they let me do is to download this data. So they're kind of kicking me out of the flat, you know. It's like I was living there for 10 years and they just tell me, get the fuck out of here. Take your 2.5 terabytes of data, download them through the internet and go uh, go F yourself. And and there were a couple of... so. And the other thing that I know is very cheeky. They don't tell you that your apps are going to slow down but their apps get start to slow down super heavily. You cannot edit like Google Calendar so comfortably. You know, it just starts sort of to glitch. And if I open it with another account like from that it's paid, that it's okay, it's, it runs fine. Uh, yeah. And also, wow. yeah. And also they, they also like, I mean, for example, I have some automatic sheets that are at the backbone of my system. They stop doing the automatic calculation of the, of these uh, sheets until you don't sort out take out your data or find a way to pay but now every time i try to pay they tell me you're located in russia where we have suspended payments to russia period and so i'm in a limbo you know and so i i remembered what i was feeling 10 years ago when i started this journey to android and coming out from iphone and i was like man i mean that was not that that's it this is the google drive part and i guess we'll come back to it but then there was another moment that happened. There are a couple of parts of this story that started a couple of years ago and continue now. The Parler incident, you know, that in a point, Parler becomes popular in the in the Republican slash Trump circles. And then Amazon comes and freezes their servers. Google App and uh, Store and Google Play Store removes them from the App Store. And Parler is just like cancelled, you know, so it happened to Parler. Um, yeah. and, 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 and then it happened I don't remember in, in which other occasion but it also happened with all the coverage of COVID I mean like everything that whoever wanted to talk about COVID in a way that was not in line with some organizations it was automatically cancelled you know so so it just started feeling very weird and then a couple of weeks ago I was in the metro uh, in the middle of all of this and with my Google cancelled and there is another story that I'll go later connected to Google the Play Store and uh, and I was reading the news and I was like, ah, App Store, Apple St Apple Store removed Sberbank app from the App Store. Sberbank is the biggest bank in the country. I mean, it's 150 million people here. There must be like 70 million people that use this bank. I mean, uh, okay. and so it was like, ah, shit. And I went to my friend, can I get your iPhone? App Store, search Sberbank, no Sberbank. Ah, fuck. And then the day after, and the next news, the other thing that is interesting is the coordination of the things, you know, like... Apple removes Parler, and then you see it two days later, the news, like, Google remove Parler. And the same happened here. It was like, Apple removes Verbank. Day after, Google removes Verbank. And so, and so that was it. I was like, man, you cannot come to me and tell me which app I can install in my phone or not, period. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. And I took that decision yeah, yeah. that day. Um, I just went. It's too much power, man. They have too much power. It's 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 insane. It's insane that they have that that you can only install things approved by them in your phone. That's insane, man. That's not computing. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And so and so, I don't know, man. For me, for me, that was too much. I, and, and I gave all the background before because you have to understand that it was a thing that was ten years in the build up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, okay, to make it practical and useful for other people, I don't 
have an app store anymore. I left the absolutely 100% and I will never in my life touch that filthy app because it's not necessary. That's the good news. It's just not necessary. The, 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 thanks to some crazy developers, it's just not necessary. So my, I went to a deep research. I created a <laughs> Telegram private yeah. group with, with me and my wife. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, before we go into into that, mm -hmm. because that's like the main topic yeah. gotcha. of the day. Gotcha. I, I wanted to know uh, what happened with the other uh, uh, apps or programs or software because we just uh, t uh, talked about Google, but the other software also doesn't run, right? Absolutely. Uh, Let me tell you. Like the, the subscriptions to, to all these uh, programs that are essential to your business. Absolutely. The, 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 one of the early news from the situation that is going on right now, one of the early news was about the fact that some people ask Elon Musk to freeze all the Teslas that are located in Russia. When I read that news, and fortunately Elon Musk denied that 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 function, you know, but who knows if Ford would have done that? I mean, the fact that there are cars that you can do that, switch them off remotely from any location, it's insane. And and so when everything started, it became really apparent that that we have very little control over most of the things that that are happening in our lives, you know. Um, and so and so. A lot of things started appearing around my world that were of that similarity of that. Like imagine uh, one of the situations was I was sitting with a student in the school and I told her, hey, Liana, send me this on WeTransfer uh, to my email so I can edit it at home. And she went to upload it to WeTransfer. And uh, there was a message in WeTransfer written in Russian, like, hello, dear users. Even though we are committed with supporting the artists and with uh, uh, providing tools for creative people to spread the word and develop themselves, we have decided that it would be terrible if our technology is used in the context of an armed conflict like the one that is happening now. So, tears, 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 please, sorry, but go fuck yourself and don't use our service, you know. And I was, uh, it obviously doesn't answer like that, but what my students said, she was looking at reading. I mean, it was like a thing that lasted a second. Opened the website. She saw it. She's also going through this Google thing, calendar stuff. Like, she reads this thing and she said, bravo, saving the world. Thank you. Thank you, we transfer. <laughs> You're certainly making the world better place for sending me to fuck off. Like, so, okay, we transfer. Yeah. Avid is the provider of uh, software that creates Pro Tools. And a while ago, Avid and most of the plugin manufacturers move to a, to a subscription-based model. I was like a lamp there and everybody else just saying, hey, whoa, cool, like, it's cheaper. Check it out, I just paid 500 rubles a month and I get all these plugins, awesome. And well, unless your country gets canceled because it's not awesome, that then all of a sudden, for example, there is a set of plugins called Kush Audio that I cannot pay for them because I cannot pay with MasterCard for them. And so when I went to pay for them, I can't. And so I have all these mixes that are old that I cannot open again because I don't have plugins that were key to my mixes. So, okay. Wow. Yeah, and I already had to remix some things because the push audio thing. Fine. Uh, uh, my whole school, the program that I created for that school is centered on Pro Tools because I love the software. We can't continue using Pro, so Pro Tools after September because our subscription will expire and Avid is in a super aggressive campaign against against the situation and so I mean they, you cannot access their website from here the same for Universal Audio Ableton is not selling on their store to Russian clients uh, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on Apple removing it's things insane, from, man. Apple removing insane. things it's yeah. insane yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. insane like why, why do the politics of a company uh, uh, have to do with me. Like, I, I don't care what you believe in. I just want to use the software that I paid for. Like, uh, it's insane that they have that kind of power and you don't see it until it affects you. That's why this conversation is so important. And in a point, I mean, in a point, I when, when this thing of the Sberbank happened and I was coming back home and I really remember I, I came out of the elevator and I just had this feeling which was like oh, wow like my data is not in my jurisdiction man oh so 
my day, the loss of the place where I am do not apply to my data. Yeah. And then, that's... yeah. And that, and I, <laughs> yeah. Think about that, public. John D. Public. Think about that. When I felt that, I was like, ah, no, man, this is deeply b fucked. This has to, yeah. this has to change. And, and so, there are some great news that came out of all of this. Um, but I guess I'll go out there and there in a bit. Um, this has had com consequences. I mean, the transformation that Russian society went in the last two months are insane. Like, I mean, we can't enter Twitter.com without a VPN. We can't enter Facebook.com without a VPN. We cannot enter BBC.com without a VPN. Um, RT and all Russian TV channels were cancelled in the rest of the world. Uh, sorry, did yeah. you want to say something, by the way? No, I, I, yeah. I have I have a question because yeah, go. Uh, what, where does the VPN uh, how, how does it play into this like you're using a VPN and Google still knows that you're in your Russia that's what you're saying yeah and this because because we all had this fake illusion of like oh yeah my VPN where are my VPNs <laughs> look yeah. at what happened I told you the story the other day with crypto.com like what happened to me it was like okay I need to find a way to pay for my Google Drive <laughs> because my Google Drive is going to end <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For, please tell that, to that story. That and story so is great. I was looking for all the options of crypto uh, debit cards, and then I tried like five, and all of them were like, sign in, you know, tell us your region, uh, where do you live? And I already know all these crypto projects are worse, so you cannot just change there. It has to, you need a proof of address and stuff. So I was like, okay, I live in Russia. Oh, sorry, we don't provide service to your country. Fine, whatever. I was already expecting this from all of them. So I tried six options. And then the last one, because I thought it was too mainstream, was Crypto.com. I was like, man, they're surely going to deny me the service. And so I open the thing and I log in through. I mean, and look at look at how the Crypto.com thing is work, works. I went to the website because I usually always sign in from websites. I don't like to sign in from apps. So I go to the website and it's like, where is the login? Where is the login? Where is the sign in? Where is the sign in? And it was always taking you to the app. So you cannot create an account on Crypto.com if you don't have the app. So, well, yeah, so I installed the app and I log in and the thing didn't ask me my rest, my location point. It was just like name, uh, family name, uh, nationality, ask me, uh, and something else. And, uh, and then, and then I, I start exploring the thing and I see, well, if you stake some, I mean, I see the option of cards that they have, sorry. And to be fair, they have a, f a free card that I could have explored. And then they have another card, which is like, hey, if you stake the equivalent of $300 on Crow, which is our crypto, our shitcoin, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, <laughs> then we're going to give you a, 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 like a, like a, a Ruby card, you know, which has $4,000 of withdrawals per day. And in the circumstance of the emergency of the world that is going on, I thought that was an important feature to have just so I can sort that out in case I have a problem. And so for me, that card was a lifeline. And when I told you this story, I didn't tell you the emotional part of it, man. Because in that moment, right now, I feel a lot better about what's going on. But, man, we were living our lives. And in the 22nd of February, it was like like a, me like a mega da going down to a dungeon of unknown. Uh, and in that moment, when I was doing the crypto thing, things were really psychologically intense and difficult. And I really felt that that card was a lifeline to me and to my family in case there was an emergency. I was and man, I had all this hope. I was like cycling to work, like, like thinking about it, like man, in the car, and then I'm gonna send it to the U.S. Like, oh man, like crypto is saving my ass. Like, wow, like I can do this. You know, uh, this is my lifeline in case I have an emergency with my family. And uh, so, 300 staking, of course, <laughs> sure, no care. It's like yeah. for the staking for the sake of my family, and I stake the 300. I go to next step to formulate the card. Oh, sorry, listen, like we don't supply <laughs> your service to Russia. <laughs> and I was like, horrible. I was like, wait, but how do you know I'm in Russia? Like, I mean, you never asked me for the location in the app. You cannot see your location. There is not a place for location. Google Play Store informs them what's the location and then i was like google <laughs> it was it was like an episode of of scooby-doo you know it was like Fa ah google play store you again <laughs> it was you again should have suspected it from the beginning 
<laughs> yeah, it goes back to that, man. They have all that power and they use it. Uh, that That's heavy. That's a heavy story. And then there is but, another one. But also, also, stop. Uh, yeah. so, sorry. Yeah, stop. go ahead, go ahead. No, but the thing about crypto.com that they let you stake the, the, the shit coin and then they tell you that they can give you service. Like they knew already, but they let you buy their fucking shit coin. Uh, that's uh, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, like that's a treason beyond uh, or similar to the other treason. They are all true. In that case, it's, it's, it's even deeper because crypto's philosophy is precisely to give financial empowerment to everybody, and you're playing with that. It's like you motherfucker, really. Yeah. Really, like fuckers. Like, and and I mean, there is a, of course the the person of customer services that what helping me. His name was was uh, vamos. <laughs> okay. He, he was from Philippines. Like, I mean, well, of course, man. I had this like insane discussion with them on on the customer service and i said in the end, i said like i will work very hard to make sure that nobody falls for this bullshit that you build again and i will succeed i promise you like so this is the first instance of that i will start my campaign as soon as i have the energy because because uh, this crypto.com thing was really sadic it was sadistic sorry it was sadistic it was like dude like yeah. especially now i mean there is a, new, a huge conflict going on maybe you can just as soon as you we open the store from this region say hey guys listen we know you're going through a tough one don't fall for a scam now but they don't say that so yeah Assholes. yeah and then the other the, the next one was really key too i have a password manager service that i use uh, and so that service, like a while ago, I stopped paying it because you can access it only from the phone. So I was like, ah, whatever, I, it's okay. I can only access it from the phone and that's enough. Uh, but then I, I felt the need to have to export a copy of my of my um, uh, database so I can have it. And then they tell me, no, sorry, listen, you can only do this from the browser. So I was like, ah, fine, okay, I'm going to then pay so I can get access to the browser, pay for a month or something, download the thing and go. And so I went to pay, even though I don't have a MasterCard abroad, I have a way to pay. And so I went to pay and they were like, no, sir, release and you know, I said, Google Pay told us that you're in rush. I said, we cannot process your payment. I was like, ah, oh, man, you fucking snitch. You fucking snitch. <laughs> that's, that's a word, man. Google, you fucking snitch. You fucking snitch, man. Like, yeah. Get the fuck out of my life. Really. Where's the don't be evil now? <laughs> I have followed that yeah. thing and they changed the motto in a point. Like it was a funny thing. Oh, they're, they're, no, yeah, of course. They, yeah. they, they couldn't keep using it because they were like so evil <laughs> that it was like a, a bad joke. Like, yeah. it's, it, like, no, like we became so evil that we can use this uh, slogan that wasn't even uh, sincere to begin with, <laughs> but we can be this cynic. Like we can be, uh, we reach a point when we can't even use the "Don't Be Evil" slogan. <laughs> Those assholes. And, and Fuck you know, you, Google. you know, there is a funny thing how it feels when you're actually doing it. it I've been thinking about this. It really feels like some sort of like ex relationship, ex amorous relationship that ends badly. And so the person gives you the boxes of your belongings like really aggressively <laughs> and passive aggressively. So, for example, I went like, oh yeah, I want to download. That's great. <laughs> I want to download my Google Photos uh, because I want to take all my data out of Google. And by the way, today I finished my backup. After this episode, I will download all my data from Google Drive, except from some things that I absolutely can't right now, but the degoldization is happening. And so, uh, 1.5 terabytes were downloaded. It was like seven days like of non-stop internet traffic. Uh, and so, and so, where was I, man? Like downloading my Google Drive, uh, uh, where I was going, damn it. I need, to, I need uh. some help. Yeah, I, I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
You were downloading your photos, don't be ah, evil. We were talking it. about downloading the photos. Yeah. Well, I was telling you okay. about this idea of, of uh, being like an examorous relationship and, and just like the person giving you yes. your belongings, like really bad. Uh, and so yes. I was like, oh, let me download my Google Photos. It's another terabyte. They don't tell you how much it is until you go to a place that is like takeout.com, uh, google.takeout.com, something like that. And oh, so, yeah, okay. so you come and it's like, give me my Google Photos. And it's like, yeah, wait a, a day and we will send you like a set of links so you can download it. It's 52 gigabyte separate zip files that I have to download now. Each <laughs> There is not like a sync service or something. It's like, here are your photos, by the way. Like, <laughs> Take your shit. Take your shit. <laughs> And get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the, the 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 Google the Google the Google Drive has I have to be honest, kudos to the developers. Everything went super smooth. Downloading 1.5 terabytes of that it's not easy. It was super smooth. I don't understand why can't you just make a click that says include photos <laughs> and then just go like Bzz. yeah. Uh, but whatever. It was not like that. So so okay. Um, that's the the Google Drive thing. They're like how it is. Uh, and it's just really regrettable and it's been really depressing like sorry especially on the crypto front i mean i have also seen like people online that are supposedly you know inclined towards uh, uh like financial freedom and stuff just like kind of trying to snitch on russians so they don't use crypto it's kind of like yeah crypto 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 freedom no no, no but wait 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 like russians russians cannot use this come on guys like it's obvious and it's like no bitcoin is money for your friends and your enemies period there is no 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 just like middle ground there and seeing a lot of people playing this middle ground and companies like google like we stand so much for the human rights equality of everybody it's like no dude no so yeah freedom is freedom freedom is freedom no and i just want to say because i can't let this pass that crypto is one thing and bitcoin Absolutely. is another thing they live in two different worlds continue and another thing i can tell you something that was funny realization in these days is like oh yeah i own this remark token which is a token that is a new platform of the nfts 2.0 that is going to be really amazing you don't give a shit about owning that stupid token when a war falls or when an event like this happens you only you want is bitcoin <laughs> you don't care about you don't yeah. care about anything there are so whatever i mean that has been another important conversation of course the Let's flip this a bit, and I mean, and then, then we will come to how I solve this because the ending, the story has yeah, a beautiful yeah, yeah, ending. Yeah, yeah. But the crypto side this of things, the great part yeah. of this conversation is the positive part. Exactly. But we're getting there. The, the, Go. The Bitcoin crypto. part of the conversation. Uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Bitcoin part of the conversation has been, has been well, you know, well, obviously when all of this happened, uh, there were these people who were the annoying guy who was always talking about bitcoin every day in the office yeah. uh, and we became from that to the saviors of everybody's fortune <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you remember those 20 times you tried to talk to me about bitcoin and i didn't listen but now i'm ready exactly. to listen please exactly. please exactly. yeah yeah exactly. yeah exactly and so and so something something that started happening is like i mean uh, i have uh, in the project i run there are kind of like 86 students or something like that and um two of those students maybe three had gotten into into bitcoin or crypto since they know me which i was talking blasting them constantly about this uh, on on the 20 on the 1st of march all of them had bought bitcoin the 86 of them uh, all of them. It was like from 2 to 86 in a week. Um, and the whole crypto culture became really vibrant in, in my microcosmos. Um, and so, and Bitcoin culture has become really vibrant in my microcosmos. There are movements uh, on the national, local level. It is obvious, it's vibrant. You know, I approached to the university where I work and I was like, I talked to the dean of the whole university and I was like, listen, dude. Well, not dude, listen, miss. <laughs> um, um, we have to create a crypto academy or a Bitcoin academy. I mean, we need to 
direct the university towards teaching this and then everybody understands the the director of human resources of the company <laughs> approached to me and he was like listen everybody says on the hallways that you're like that bitcoin guy like how do we pay our employees with bitcoin and i was like oh yeah sure <laughs> i'll make your presentation right now i mean this company has like it's like 1,700 students or something. It's, it's like a Whoa. huge company. Yeah, it's a huge company of different types of universities because it's like six universities in one, kind of. Um, and so, okay. yeah, 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 it's a huge project. Like, it's a huge Amazing, project. Amazing, yeah. 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 And so, and so, yeah, the Bitcoin part has been real. I have been really disappointed with the Bitcoin community seeing it from above. It has been painful to some of them, I guess, painful to see this. I understand that everybody's trying to save their ass in Washington, so Washington doesn't get angry with crypto and Bitcoin. It's kind of like, I feel there is this feeling in the air about Bitcoin and Russia right now, because Russia said that it's going to accept payments of gas in Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's like a gigantic news. It's like, what else do you want? I mean, it doesn't get, it gets larger than that, but that's huge. And all the Bitcoin community was like, I cannot. Say. I don't know if all the Bitcoin community. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But like the the people I follow sure, are sure, sure. all pro freedom. Yeah, sure. Like, me too. Me too. They don't yeah. give a shit about what you think about your uh, ethnicity, about your religion, about yeah. anything. They are like. Bitcoin is for everyone. You're right, you're right. And uh, I've seen these people. But, yeah, there are, uh, you know, it's a big community. So there are all kinds of people saying all kind of, kinds of things. And it's a decentralized community. Sure. So there's no no sure. party line. Sure. So, but, but I don't think uh, everyone, yeah. So, so this... But, well, Okay. I, I agree with you, and I thank you for for that shakeup because it's true. It's important to mention it. I mean that the bit there there is this core Bitcoin uh, thinkers and coders who are it's like a very very amazing clan of people who really got it right you know they got it right in certain of their, their mix between uh, freedom of speech and freedom of and financial freedom and geopolitical knowledge they they got it right. Um, I wanted to make a joke a bit, which is like a lot of the Bitcoin and crypto community were also like, mass adoption coming. Oh, no, Russia, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on, I like... want mass, mass, ad mass adoption, but not like that. Exactly, not like that. exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was funny. It was actually really funny to see some people who are always been like, like uh, uh, you know, temples of freedom just claiming things like that. It's been funny. Um, but the court pick guys, yeah. no, it's true. Um, and so... I mean, obviously, there was a huge big crypto slash Bitcoin meetup in the last two days organized by RBK. I mean, there is hope in the environment. And obviously, I mean, what Bitcoin means, it's across this whole time that has been like, and this is really important part of this conversation. And I really need to send this with all the echo and emphasis that I can. I'm not saying this for being, and you know, you understand that I'm telling this to the audience. I'm not saying this for yeah. being poetic. Bitcoin was a beam of light across all of this episode that I'm living with my family. Now think about it for a second. Pa, 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 pa. I'm a father of two kids. I got a wife. We live in Moscow. I'm from Venezuela and she's from Russia. I run a musical academy in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was all the time like, got my sats there. I don't need to ask anybody yeah. for my money. I don't need to go to send an email. I don't need to talk to customer service. I decide at 11 p.m. that I want to take a flight at 4 a.m. And I land in another country at 7 a.m. And I have all my finances with me. In the worst case scenario, because the thing is complicated, I send that money to a milker or whatever. Not to a milker, because a milker doesn't make big contracts actions at all, to what I understand at all. He, no. Yeah. Uh, Since I so them. I send it to, to Flavio or to another friend, and then if if the worst case scenario, and then when I land in another place, Flavio sends it to me. That's it, no problem. Uh, and what that meant, man, I was going to the metro and seeing everybody's life devastated. The ruble went from seventy to one hundred and forty, mm -hmm. like in a week, it yeah. doubled. Well, up to a Venezuelan, this this doesn't make tickles, but but <laughs> but I mean, to the world, this is really a piece of it's really fucked up. And so, and so, uh, and I was just looking at all of this, like, wow, I have a lot of rubles now. 
<laughs> I mean, because, yeah. because, <laughs> because of the thing going to do doubling the Drupal price and still having the same amount of Bitcoin. Like, oh, okay. Like, and I, all my friends were like, man, I sold the house like three months ago for 10 million rubles and I just lost half of my value. What the fuck? And I was like, you know, don't yeah. don't mean to tell you I told you so, bro. But I kind of told you so, like ten million times, yeah. bro. Like, <laughs> just to to put it into perspective to the public, like if you had your money, your wealth stored in rubles, you lost fifty percent of your wealth. But if you had it in Bitcoin, uh, it. Uh, it's the opposite effect because you have the strong cor currency and if this currency uh, loses its value it's uh, almost positive to you it you it's not at least ne neutral you Look, know no, like I, you I have tell you something one bitcoin if one bitcoin you have your bitcoin and that's uh, a, a guarantee that's guaranteed you have your bitcoin Yes. So, something really interesting happened there, uh, which is that the rubble, and I want to keep the historical reference clear, the rubble went back to the price where it was before the conflict started. It was like, boom, boom. Okay. Yes, it's now like... I didn't know. Yeah, 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 because the Russian government... It stabilized it. Yeah, it, the, it's, it's unfair to say it without explaining to you that a heavy control, a currency control, a currency exchange control was established. So there was okay. like, they put a like 20% something like that prime for buying dollars so if you're going to buy one dollars you pay like 1.2 just as a fee oh, okay. Um, okay. and they have been reducing that prime as as time goes on quickly like it's been quickly so it's not been so fast and also they initially they said you cannot move money until September outside of Russia then they change it like you can move $5,000 a month then they change it you can move $10,000 a month but it would well, be unfair to say that the rule recovered. Oh my God! Like no. But and then the Russian government. Yeah, but, uh -huh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, but I, I, I like to add context to this to our worldwide uh, audience. I am living in in Buenos Aires, and here in Argentina, there's a a, a currency control, and there's a thirty percent. Uh, uh, prime to buy dollars, yeah, and that's uh, like the normal thing. Uh, we're not in a conflict, and there, and, and that hasn't uh, recovered the currency. Uh, yeah, yeah, it hasn't recovered the currency, and it's still on, and it has been for a year, and wow. there's no sign of that changing. The thing is that the thing is that Russia exports every day. I don't remember exactly the number, but a gazillion dollars of gas and oil. It's the like top thir three yeah. exporter in the world, and so they they forced the countries that are, that sanctioned Russia to pay for gas and oil in rubles. Uh, yeah, that's and and it was a ballsy move and they did it and they executed and and these factors combined recover the 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 rule but what i wanted to say is that there was this people who who imagine sold their btc when the rule was twice up and then they came back to the rule normal and had twice the more amount of capital that they had before so there was arbitrage there was a huge arbitrage there for those who understand that i was looking at this like ah look how funny like i have so many rules and then the thing went back and i was like ah oh, i don't have so many rules anymore yeah <laughs> but for those of you them who know they 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 did it so so okay i mean the crypto bitcoin part them. the crypto bitcoin part is man i don't want to be poetic when i say this thing of the beacon like i was looking at my kids with hope you know it really means this and if i wouldn't have had that this would have been one of the most depressing episodes ever uh and so thank you satoshi thank you satoshi because i mean that was yeah. a, and, and in the case of the in the conflict in in uh, in the ukraine like the, there is a lot of examples of people who could leave ukraine because they could buy a car in bitcoin and stuff like and and i mean and same on this side uh, people who save yeah. their, their savings so I mean, if you still don't get the use case, I hope that you're not forced to get the use case. I remember some quote I said like uh, there are there are 
there are uh, you will encounter Bitcoin to moments of your life. It was a tweet I read once. Um, when it was a, a curiosity and when it was a necessity. Yeah. Uh, so don't don't make sure that Actually, you don't yeah. catch you on the necessity. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People who are not in Russia learn from this man, from this story, and learn about Bitcoin because your life might depend on it. Uh, yeah, and, and your psychological stability too, because I mean, what it means to have that beacon is is solid, man. I was like going on my bike, like, well, okay, things are so tough and stuff, but yeah, I mean, my sats are there, you know, no, no need to ask for a bank. So, okay. Like taking it towards right. towards the positive and kind of like the, how how this yeah is. let's do it yeah let's do it this and is it. the great part of this conversation so let's go twelve years uh, ten years ago when I started trying to jailbreak and enter into my phones and all of that I started realizing that it was not easy to be honest and it required attention and updates and things like that. Uh, and there is a person whom I'm sorry right now that the name escapes me and I'll put it on the description below but he, just to point to his projects is enough uh, there is a, a programmer who created an OS called Graphene OS and uh, Graphene OS is a totally open software project that made a ROM of Android so they grabbed there is a project called the Android Open Source Project and so it's kind of like some modules of Android that are available for developers to develop in an open source way. And so he built uh, security and and um, and privacy oriented OS that has nothing to do with the App Store at all. Just like actually at the moment in my phone, I have kind of like four or five proprietary, proprietary software apps. And the rest is all op free open source. And so when I started going down this rabbit hole, I reached this word, which is FOSS, F-O-S-S, -S, uh, free and open yeah. sof software systems. And no, no, uh, sorry, free and open source software. Software, sorry, sorry, free and open so so yeah. software. Uh, and, uh, and I realized that there is a whole community of people and if you, anybody wants to Google this or <laughs> to Google this, damn, I need to train my brain. <laughs> If anybody wants that was to, great. <laughs> if anybody wants to, yeah, I say Google. Absolutely. Yeah. If anybody wants yeah. to 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 get into this, you should Eric. search. You should search for the communities. The googling. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. You have to Google the googling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, yeah. you, you have to find uh, the Google and and also there is FOSS Android, which is amazing. F O S S Android. These are Reddit communities and self-hosted. Because I mean, here we go. I mean, I'll tell you the whole story. So, okay, uh, Graphene OS. It's really easy to install. It's not like the past. It is an absolutely dumb thing that it, you can do it and actually. It installs it from the browser. So you connect your phone to the computer, the browser. When you reach the page of Graphene OS, the page tells you, ah, look, I see that your Pixel 4 here. Like, important note, it only works with Pixel phones because Pixel phones, developed by Google, unfortunately, but it's how it is. Pixel phones, phones they, they are developer phones, so they have more open... Uh, functions that other phones don't have and it should be it's easier if it's a operator agnostic pixel phone what it means by that is that it's not given to you by your operator but it's more like you found it free um, and so you get this phone connect it to your browser click a button sit there and watch and the whole thing takes like 45 minutes and bam you're out with a version that looks like exactly like Android uh, 12 uh, very beautiful, well done, fast, comfortable, uh, but it's really built upside down for being private and, and secure. And so the first thing that you have on top of the phone is like a block camera, block location, block uh, a microphone button. It's very extreme. Like if you have it on and you make a phone call, the person cannot hear you. You can hear the other person, but the person cannot hear you. Uh, whenever I open the Telegram app, you can switch off these things if you want. I mean, it, it defeats the purpose, but you can. It's it's said to be comfortable. And and then you find out that there is an app uh, an app store called F Droid, uh, which is a false only apps uh, android uh, store so so far i have never signed into any company never said anything from my phone that i'm that i'm who i am and i still get all the functionality so with fdroid you will find uh, an app called new uh, new pipe 
for example. That it's a client that grabs all the data of YouTube and serves it to you in a locally hosted app where you can import your favorites and everything, all your playlists, and load them in this app. And now you're, you're, you will have the same functionality as have your YouTube, but you never log in as a user. You save it there, and actually the app has a download audio, download video button. So I'm I'm like sending songs. To, yeah, I'm sending songs to my wife on Telegram. Like, oh, check out this song, and I send her the audio already. Like, yeah, yeah. And does it <coughs> have ads? It doesn't. No, it right? doesn't load to the ads, and it works on the background. It works Come on the background. Come on, I'm sold. <laughs> and you can you can install it. You can install it in your usual Android. Any Android user can download the F Droid app. And, inst and install new pipe, and then you're running a new pipe. That's it. And also, you know, it has a really amazing function, which is okay. like you can you can you click in one button and you stop seeing the server of YouTube and you start seeing the server of Bandcamp. And so okay. you can make playlists with our like YouTube videos and Bandcamp songs. It's it's super crazy, different way of doing apps. You see, and all the FOSS yeah. all the FOSS world is like that. It's full of this. It, it it really feels like that early internet of people doing things for their own volition. Because now, whenever you download like a yoga app, you don't have this MIT sorry this uh, Silicon Valley corporation. It's like some dude in who knows where in India who was like, oh, I gotta make an app. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and it blows it there, and then you're like, "Whoa!" Like you can just use it like like as a Venezuelan in Moscow. Like so, so it's a very different approach. So I have like internet speed tests, a weight tracker. Uh, uh, there is a Twitter account that works the same, like like I told you of new new pipe, uh, which just like like I mean, it, it, you don't log in, but you can save all your your favorite tweets and everything, and, and uh, you cannot reply from there. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I already cracked that up. That's why I appeared back on Twitter because I understood how, and it's really simple. And, and I'll explain you. It's, it's trivial, um, and so etc. There are all these apps. So great, it really works. Now, uh, for example, <laughs> one of the main reasons why I wanted to get the fuck out of Google is because they didn't let me install this Bearbank app in my phone. So and then I was like, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a complete the move if I wouldn't be able to install this Bearbank app in my phone. And so. No problem, yeah. you can. You just go to the website of Sberbank and all the companies. If you start scrutinizing this, you will realize that everybody offers this. It's not only Russian companies now, like you will find that American companies do this too. Like if you search carefully, <coughs> you will reach to the APK file and then you will can download it and install it. And then psh, I installed Sberbank, installed all the apps that I need from Russia. I found everything. I found uh, Yandex Navigator because there is also, I mean, right now in my phone, I have two app stores. One app store is F-Droid, which is a free open software app uh, store. And the other one is a, it's a group of software developers, also open source, that is called APK Pure. And so these guys okay. are, are mirroring everything that comes up to the app store, like, Pook! and they just put the, you the APK there. And the whole thing even connects to the server and tells you, like, your app is out of date. You know, like, you can update apps from there. And so... Pfft, That's Right. You can live a whole life. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, my question is, you you just said that you can use this uh, app source not using Graphene, using yeah. another yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Android. Yeah. You can open. Uh, you can how, open. How can you do that? You you need for to, the public, not for me. Sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sure. You need to you need to go to F Droid. F-Droid, uh, you will download it from their website. As soon as you enter to F-Droid, there is a, like, download APK, like, you know. Okay. Like, and so oh, you download okay. it to your phone, and then you click and install F-Droid. And then you have everything that is in F-Droid, you can install it. And uh, the other APK Pure, they have, um, uh, they have, um, I think you can find it in the usual app store of Google. Uh, uh, or you can also download the APK because I mean I download it in my phone because I don't have the App Store of Google, so you can download it from there too, and then you run the APK Pure app there. It's not like exclusive for fast draw phones. You can install it in any phone and new pipe. Yeah, Freeter, Freeter is the Twitter one. Infinity is the the, the Reddit one. Uh, now that brings me to the other side of the important part of the conversation. So I was like. Wow, this is amazing. Like I can interact with all these apps, like I can do this. Ah, by the way, how do you log into Twitter? For example, the the um, the the browser of um, of uh, Graphene OS, uh, it's called Vanadium. 
and it's a clone okay. of Google Chrome, but super more safe. So it looks the same. Uh, and it has a function which is like add to home screen so it makes you like an app version of any website that you're looking at this is an old function of android actually but you can do this and then it, it gives you a link a, an icon in your menu which is like oh, okay like i click here and it takes me to my twitter it's kind of looks like the website but it's a bit appified the website the okay. website but it's given to you by the browser so the twitter cannot like it's look spy on your location and stomp through the phone if you don't let it um blah 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 but then i was like wow well, okay that's i can great. i can use all this stuff that sounds great but how do i what happens if i lose my phone i mean right now all my all my youtube account will not be connected to my google account so do i really want to lose that story uh which is an interesting story history i mean um i don't want to lose that history so so i was thinking okay how do i back up my phone and so I, I see, I see that the Graphene OS has a backup function, and I go to backup, 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 and I get there, and it tells me it actually makes me create a seed phrase like a crypto or a Bitcoin project, like like gives me a seed phrase, and then I hit backup, and then he gives me a, a option to store it locally, uh, like in my computer. I can connect my my phone and just hit a button like download my phone to this computer, and so you see, then the phone. The new pipe app with all my files will be loaded to my computer, and so if I lose my phone, I get all my history there. But that means that I'm gonna have to manually do this every day. And what if I go out on a trip and then I don't have a computer and stuff? So how do I back up that? And when I and one of the options that the the Graphene OS gives you is a service. It's not a service actually, because in the false world is very different. It's it's a project called uh, New Cloud. So I see new cloud and I'm like, what the hell is this new cloud thing? And well, new cloud is a project that they made free open software that anybody can grab and modify and install. And that free open software they made is a it's a like an equivalent of all the services that Google offers on their cloud service. So it's like it has a document editor, a spreadsheet editor, a messaging service, a video conference system. It's really well developed. It's, it's not like crappy. It really looks pro. It has a app like a, like an uploader of photos as a software so you can upload all your photos and it has also an upload on my phone and also it can log the 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 um, the coordinates of your phone anytime you want to a spreadsheet in that cloud so that's how you can do like a locate my phone kind of app and so okay. and so but new cloud they give you the chance to host this server yourself so i mean all you have to do is to buy a computer that's the process where i am right now Buy a computer yeah. like a like a Linux, very simple computer. It's like a two two gigahertz, two cores, four gigabytes of RAM. It's like the most simple computer you can get in the market right now, with big hard drives connected to the internet, and you download the new cloud software, install it there, download the new cloud app to your phone, and you route this to your home server. Took. I mean, it's just like you literally put a website in your new cloud app, and that website is given to you by the app. That it's on the phone, on the on your computer at home, <coughs> yeah. And then every time you take a photo, a new file is created in your computer at home that has a photo there. Every time your yeah. geolocation is lo tagged, it's recorded in that document that harder that you're there. And if you don't want to make a service, then New Cloud offers you to to host that data for you. And that's that's how the company makes money. And you see, it's like a new type of software venture that they deploy. Uh, open source software that anybody can modify and take and to the lazy ones they offer them a, a, surf a service there if they want to connect it to that free open software and that's what I'm thinking now about the future of my life in Russia how the fuck do I make a company that follows that model um, yeah yeah, of, right. of deploying free open software that everybody can edit and then you put on top of it a service and so the next move is to connect my new cloud to my home server and then have this phone updated constantly there and I can live a life without having to ever log in to any app anywhere with some selected cases that I will choose crypto centralized exchange there are some things that for for now we will have to use if you want to use if you still because you can go into all of this without having to de-googleify yourself like if you don't hate Google and you still want to work with Google uh, there is an app called G Draw, uh, Micro G 
which you can install in this uh, operative system, and then it runs Google Apps. Um, yeah. And so you can install Google Google uh, Maps, for example. Like the way I, of course, I've been reading about the Graphene OS community and how people use their Graphene OS phones. And for example, so people download Google Maps, download the maps locally, and block the capacity of Google Maps to connect to the internet because the phone has this functionality. You can go to any app and say like, never allow to connect to the internet. And okay. And so, and never share my screen, my anything with this thing. Like for example, it's totally different phone. Like when you copy things to the clipboard, it kind of like destroys them after fifteen seconds. Um, like like the phone That's is great. The, the, yeah, yeah, the phone is really focused, and it has an inbuilt like trans, uh, encryptor. So, I started sending encrypted message to to um, uh, to my wife and stuff like etc. So so. It's a whole different ball game. So that's kind yeah. of where we are in this story, and the the happy ending exists. Uh, all you need to do is to develop your your literacy, your computer literacy, and uh, get a hands on to this. There is a way out. Um, and like everything in the life, you know, if you let the responsibility of something that is the responsibility of your life to others, later you're gonna end up a slave. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to add that I do hate Google, and I do think they are evil, but I don't have a, a Pixel phone. Mm -hmm. what, that's, Only yeah. Pixel phones. Yeah, I don't have a Pixel phone yet, so maybe I can start by using this uh, free and open source software uh, Directly from that, uh, how how was the, the name of the of the app store? F Droid. F Droid. Yes. I can start like uh, dipping my toes into the thing, and then when I can buy like a Pixel phone, uh, I can go like baby steps. Yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Like, yeah. You can go. Uh, uh, you you don't have to do everything at once. You can do it. Uh, Per per periodically, yeah. Uh, don't 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 beat yourself up. Everybody hates Google. Fuck Google. Yes. But you, we, <laughs> uh, it's not it's not easy. You have to put your your heart and soul into it. Uh, in a way, um, you know, like everybody is busy. And maybe they don't think they have the time to do it because it seems so vast. Yes. But you don't have to do it everything at once. Yes. Maybe you have the, the necessity and that's why you're uh, going all in. But other people can do one step at a time, go yes. uh, improving their privacy and go improving their 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 their, their, their I don't know, their state in the world in the computerized world yeah and, and i see it so, i see it i mean i it's a good way for me to end the podcast with the, my matrix fandom that i'm such a fan of that project and it's a beautiful like the metaphor of matrix returns in the sense that living in the real real world if you think about the universe of that movie it requires you to make some sacrifices like like everything in life you know uh, but hey are you the type of guy who wants to keep taking the red pill every week or are you the type of guy of or or girl or person that wishes to you know take a bit more control over your whole destiny and um that's a question that is up to you you know um i don't i i i found recently that for me one of my favorite words is boring um and what i mean by that is a very powerful position to be it's like i find it boring whoever doesn't cares about this it's like okay <laughs> fine <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe I'm going to skip and talk with another person in this bar, you know, because it, it, it is just really important, man. It's really important to, to sort of take control of this and uh, taking it to the extreme hardcore. I think that it's important, you know, and, and that it's possible. And it became so simple that that thanks to those developers. And the other thing that comes here, by the way, that is beautiful, is like... And my approach, my relationship with software now, and this will happen to all of you who make this transition, is very different. Like, I immediately loaded some Bitcoin to a Lightning Network wallet, and I just started sending money to all of these developers. The money that was, that I was spending on on uh, apps 
and I'm, I'm kind of calculating it in the same amount a month. It's kind of like, ah, I used to pay 2,000 rubles a month of software subscriptions. Okay, I have to send out 2,000 rubles of Bitcoin uh, to, to the developers of this software that I found. And uh, the relationship with the software community becomes very different. Um, because that's the thing about the internet that it's just like so many hundreds of billions of people uh, sorry, not hundreds of billion people, sorry, billions of people, um, that there is an economy for everything. And with Bitcoin and with the capacity to stream Satoshis uh, through the Lightning Network, pff, like if you get one million users to donate you one dollar, you get a million dollars. And this is totally possible. I mean, it's not impossible that this is going to happen. And, and so... Yeah. I mean, maybe the future is not... I mean, I think, honestly, projecting out towards the future, I think the majority of the humanity are going to stay in those centralized uh, exchanges. I will observe them from now because I will never come back. I am sure of that. It's only because it's comfortable. If it weren't be comfortable, maybe I would have... But it really isn't. It's the same thing I used to have, but without a fucking snitch telling to some app that I'm living in Russia. Uh, yeah. So who yeah. wouldn't want that? <laughs> um, yeah. But no, I think that the majority will stay. The majority will sell in those in those services, and and I will observe it from this vantage point, seeing what that means, and how that is gonna. I'm sure it's gonna turn back on everybody that is watching this this podcast in a point. Like the whole thing is gonna turn on you, and you're gonna be in the center of this stream. And it's going to be like, oh, sorry, you're unacceptable for us as a customer. And it's like, dude, but I just want to give you money, so you give me a service. No, uh, sorry. Right of oh, access is reserved. And that thing can be filtered down to nation, to whatever. Uh, to individuals, to man. Individuals. Maybe you you have an opinion that, mm -hmm. that people in power don't like, and they can turn everything in your life uh, off that's too much power man we can't give that to them today uh, excuse me to interrupt yeah. you it's a quick news today the ukrainian government sent a list of people to binance it, it happened yesterday saying like freeze the accounts of these people and they did uh, i mean i i cannot confirm the veracity of that news i have read read the 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 report of the person who is being affected by this himself so maybe he's lying but that news came out today uh we need to see if it's true or not so i mean that's the, the thing that has been really shameful to think about not shameful you're a maximalist and you understand it um but i'm sending this message out to the crypto community if you guys think that we are now living in some sort of like crypto punk utopia you are you're absolutely off the game man like this is so fucking centralized and and so uh, really censor prone uh, the way it is right now there are avenues out to consume not to consume to acquire bitcoin and crypto but you see if you want to enter to the crypto world you're always going to have to engage uh, in some sort of p2p transaction uh, if you're going to use DeFi, i mean so DeFi is really not so d at all uh um, so decentralized, I mean. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it gave me. I was in a a bubble burst in me. I was like, yeah, we live in this crypto punk reality. No, we don't. Until there is no total mass adoption of Bitcoin, that becomes legal tender everywhere. There is capacity of censorship, and it's only gonna get worse. Yeah, I'm gonna add to that that. Uh, the next step for Bitcoin, and this is something contro somewhat controversial, but the next step for Bitcoin is usage. You have to yeah. use your Bitcoin, Sense spend your Bitcoin, and earn Bitcoin. We have to create cir circular economies, and they don't have to be physical, you know, like they... Uh, the physical uh, circular economies are needed, but also the the uh, internet circular economies. Absolutely. Like we have to start spreading the usage of Bitcoin uh, on the ground, around you, trying to get uh, 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 stores and restaurants do to accept big Bitcoin. And also on the internet, trying to use services that accept Bitcoin. 
because that's the way Bitcoin is the only decentralized crypto cryptocurrency. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And uh, if we can get an economy going, there's no way to censor that. The only way to censor Bitcoin is on the edges where it uh, collides with the real world. If you have to with exchange the fiat world, your world Bitcoin, with the fiat yeah, world. yeah, with the fiat world. If you have to exchange your Bitcoin for fiat, in that place, it can be censored. But in the uh, in the internet place, uh, in the in the Bitcoin network, it can't. So let's do this. I, I'm not saying it will be a year or two years no, no, no. Uh, for hyperbitcoinization. Ten let's, years. Let's think ten years. Mm -hmm. But let's start doing it. Let's start spending our Bitcoin. Let's start uh, er earning in Bitcoin. Try Absolutely. to pay your uh, your your employees with Bitcoin. Try to accept Bitcoin if you have a business and let's get this thing going. And it's the other important. thing I wanted to say, Leo, is that I had uh, uh, someone uh, told me uh, through, through the intercom that we are canceled. I'm sorry to inform you, but that, that joke you made uh, about the, the Indian developer uh, got us canceled. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> we can't use Google anymore. Uh, we can't. We this podcast is is, is only uh, the the people who saw it live. Only they can. Uh, uh, I, it's only for them because we we are canceled. The show is canceled. Yeah. Uh, sorry, man. Sorry. It, was, it took a while to come back, and it was such a pity that it got canceled so fast. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so <laughs> awesome, man. I think that I think that it's a it's a great way to pull the plug, like uh, on this night uh, of discussing this new future. Uh, do you have yeah, uh, as a, as a as a as a guest host? Do you have any any closing remarks? Maybe. Yeah, uh, my closing remarks would be uh, the Bitcoin thing that I just said. Like that's the the next step. We we. We, uh, that's, uh, people don't understand why you would spend Bitcoin if Bitcoin is gaining uh, value. Because if it's gaining value and you spend it now, you are like the guy who bought the pizza for yeah. 10,000 Bitcoins. But it's really not like that. Uh, uh, at all because there's the opportunity cost if you earn in bitcoin you have to spend bitcoin that's uh reality and the other thing is that if you earn in any fiat currency uh, and you don't buy bitcoin with that fiat currency it's the same thing you are spending your, your your, Absolutely. Their, the opportunity cost uh, is it's there still. So yeah. you can just buy more Bitcoin and save a part, and the other part start spending it. Yeah. Because it's the same than that spending fiat. If you think about it like that, because the the you have to buy a bread bread. Uh, you can't live without bread. If you buy it with fiat, it's more comfortable, it's easier. But if you can't find a way to buy it with Bitcoin, you are contributing to this new network effect that we have to no, it's the only way. keep to, to start. Yeah, we have to do it without uh, waiting for legal tender. None of that chat is important because in El Salvador, that's the way it started. The people started using it. The people in Bitcoin Beach in El Sonte started using the Bitcoin because they didn't have another way of transacting that wasn't cash. 
it was a cash-based economy. They had this new Bitcoin influx of money and they started using it because if it's not illegal, it's legal. You can do it. You can yeah. do it. It, it uh, until there's a law that says you can't do it. It's not illegal. So we can do it. We can start spending the Bitcoin, trying to get people around it, around us to accept it. And that will create a new network effect that will render censorship, uh, financial censorship, uh, it will make it meaningless. It, they can't uh, censor us anymore if we can get this rolling and we will. Bitcoin for the win. That's it. Yeah. Leo, take it away. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night. Good day. Good evening, wherever you are. Take care.